It, it, you know, and it's the same thing when it comes down to female action films. Even though there, we know that that you know ladies can train to do fighting, but it's not innately in their nature to do that. So women don't go and watch movies with girls doing martial arts. Men don't even go and watch it. You're weak. One of the things you said to me, because we met here last year, and I still remember this, we were talking about screenwriting and, and writing in general, and you said, every great story begins with a boy and a girl. And once I got past the transphobia and the homophobia <laughs> of that statement, <laughs> it really made me think, because that is so fundamentally true. Yeah. Well, women no longer exist as characters in the movies. You cannot go to the movies uh, and see a woman who is anything like a woman that you would actually meet unless you date uh, wrestlers, you know, I mean, a, you know, uh, the, 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 pro probably, uh, it, I mean, if it, when you talk about, you know, before the camera started rolling, we were talking about all the controversial things we say and how people get angry. Yeah. Maybe the thing that made people angrier than anything else I've ever said on the air was I, I saw a show, The Witcher, in which the woman was fighting a duel. And I said, women can't fight duels with men. That's not the way that works. I mean, if it's mi the Middle Ages and you're in an actual battle, not on a fencing field, those guys were like, you know, it's not like you'd be fighting me. You'd be fighting a guy, this gigantic guy, and he'd come and just wipe you off the face of the earth. If you have a character in a fantasy who's a woman, she should have some magical power because women do have that. But, but you, you can't keep putting women in who fight because that doesn't happen in real life. And, and when my daughter was growing up, there would be a scene and a woman would punch a guy and the guy would roll ass over a tea kettle <laughs> out the door. And I would say to her, you know, if you punch a guy, the first thing that happens is your hand breaks. And the second thing that happens is he beats the living crap out of you, mm. you know? And so don't, don't ever think that that's a real thing. Mm. So feminism destroyed the character of the woman. And yet that's what stories are about. They're about whether a woman can be um, womanly enough and whether a man can be manly enough to keep life going to keep the planet, you know, the human race uh, continuing. Um, and, and in telling that story, you are telling an essential, uh, what's called a, a psychomachy, the, the, the in, inner battle that we all fight to bring together the pieces of ourselves because we all have female and male elements and we, when you put those together, uh, you are getting something like the image of God, you know, in which we are made. And so that story is, is the story. And once you lose that story, you're not telling any story at all. And it, it really is interesting. I mean, I went just the other day, my wife and I went and saw the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. And the first thing that happens is a giant bad guy comes in. Tip, this is a classic scene because this is the scene where Brad Pitt is reading the script and says, oh yeah, I, I want to play that part. Bad guy comes in, he's a monster, he's huge. Comes up to a woman, the woman just beats the crap out of him. And I thought, yeah, you've already lost me, you know, the rest. And, and, and in fact, the film is entertaining, it's beautiful, but it's dead inside. It has no inside because that character, that female character, women no longer know who they're supposed to be. And they get insulted if you say to them, well, you may be many things, but the one thing you're not is a man, you know. And so you have to understand what you are as a woman. And that, that has been outlawed as, a, as an idea. And it signifies something in the culture to me that that... that very basic it's the core it's like a house without a foundation <laughs> right. well you know I, I wrote this book the the truth and beauty and i and i have a chapter on frankenstein mm. by mary shelley and i point out that when people read frankenstein it's it really starts the science fiction genre she mm. basically invents the modern uh, science fiction genre and when people read that they always say well frankenstein wanted to be god he wanted to create life and, and mary shelley herself said this and i thought no Men do create life. Men and women do create life. He wants to replace not God. He wants to replace the mother. He wants to create life without a woman. And, and that is, to a large degree, what science fiction is about. And to a large, an even larger and worse degree, what science is about. It has been a long uh, attempt to eliminate the fertility and the difference of women because men are afraid of that power. And that's what Mary Shelley, I thought, foresaw. That, you know, if you think of, think of a movie like The Terminator, you know, the machines take over and, they, and the people rebel. So how do they stop the rebellion? They go back in time to kill the hero's mother. 
And if you watch that first brilliant film, the woman they want to kill, she has nothing special about her except she, she's a girl. That's her superpower, you know? And they know they've got to kill her because that's the machine world depends on women being taken away. This is, you know, just right this moment, people were yelling at me on Twitter because I said we should uh, boycott Anheuser-Busch for putting a, a boy pretending to be a girl on one of their beer cans. And they said, oh, this is such a small thing. Why are you getting so upset? This is everything. This is everything. The role of women in a society who, after, after all, create humankind um, is, is everything. And that's why societies that have freer women, who liberate women, who have respect for women, that's why they thrive. And societies that don't get stuck in a kind of medieval uh, half-life and it, it's important because soon there'll be machines that give birth. And then we'll turn to women and say, and what do you, what's special about you? I can run faster than you. I'm stronger than you are. I can do math better than you can do it. What is it you do again? And they'll have lost their vocation. It's a dangerous, dangerous moment. And because our humanity depends on them. It's such a profound point. And that's, that is really what we're seeing. And right. we're seeing it right the way through our culture. When are we going to wake up from this, Andrew? Well... Hopefully, you know, we're not going to wake up until women get angry. And, and this is the thing. You know, uh, my friend and colleague at The Daily Wire, Candace Owens, was just saying when they did it to Budweiser beer, suddenly Budweiser beer took an economic hit. And she said, why? Because men drink Budweiser beer and they get angry, but women... Not real men. Not, <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. not. And certainly not men with any taste in beer. Right? But... But she was just saying that men don't take this stuff quite as much as women do. Women have been convinced. My problem with feminism was always the same thing. It was always, it was not that women shouldn't have choices. It was that their values are men's values. They say, oh, you're just a homemaker. You know, you think, really just a homemaker? I mean, is, I mean isn't the home the basic building block of the state? Uh, you know, just, you're just raising children. You're just creating new people. That has been the feminist uh, archetype from the very beginning. Uh, Simone de Beauvoir said women should not be allowed to stay home and raise their kids because too many women will choose to do that. And they have been convincing women uh, that this is a, a minor thing. This is being thrown out of the society. So when you say how long will this last, the answer is until you start to have women saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, we've been duped. We've been duped out of ourselves. And you're starting to see it now. I mean, we were uh, talking about Mary Harrington, who's just this brilliant, uh, you know, Oxford-educated thinker, and she, you know, had a baby. And she was totally in with the left, had a baby, and she thought, no, I actually kind of like this. I actually kind of want to do this. And when more thinking women have that kind of courage, then you get, you'll have ideas trickling down that, that will counter feminism, because feminism has just been a mistake. It has made everybody miserable. <laughs> you, you, yeah. want, you wonder why I yeah. get it. You, I wonder why people get upset at you. Twitter. Yeah. Cut to this, and you know that they're driving through the uh, streets. Yeah. You know that they're running into actual mopeds and cars and stuff and doing all these stunts. It feels right. real because it is. I've seen some people that are like, there was just so much female stuff in this movie. It what? felt like identity uh, politics. It's like, bro, they literally, the woman though. literally couldn't fucking drive. Like, yeah. Yeah. the woman uh, yeah. could not drive in this movie. <laughs> Like, I actually really had, liked her character. I, I like she was her. fine too. She was a fucking pain in the ass because she refused to like trust that Ethan was like going to do the right thing. And she made everything harder for him. Mm -hmm. And despite all that, he continued to like go and go and go and go. So I like mean, most women. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a real life like thing. Like, you know, you're, this is what <laughs> men deal with. But incompetent, dumb woman who can't drive, but she's so fucking yeah. hot, you put up with it. <laughs> you driving one hand. Like, <laughs> yes, the idea happened. of me driving one handed handcuffed to someone would be more efficient than a woman driving. That's real world shit. And by the way, all that chasing was done in reality. Like he was actually right. handcuffed right. to her. He was actually doing it one handed. They did a behind the scenes feature of that as well. Mm. Yeah. And it, you could it, I it, like it shows character because she she didn't she wasn't a mary sue right she didn't step no. in and everybody loved her she was perfect at everything she was really she was, she was in over her head she was very confident at the start because she was in right. a wheelhouse with the thievery mm -hmm. and so it was all excited to you know exciting to and she thought this is a lot of fun then she got in the shit and she knew she was in the shit right. yes yeah. and and it was and it was a great change of her character then realizing what this fucking world was actually was mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, there were some moments. Don't want to ruin some moments, but there's there was a 
an amazing i thought an amazing scene when they're in a safe house with her and and uh ethan and ving oh, rhymes yeah. and, and stuff like that i think i want to see it again now i like the grace character a lot and i noticed that at the very beginning of the movie he was wearing like a gray vest and gray pants and a white top and then like at the end of the movie on the train scene grace was wearing what looked like the exact same outfit so it's like oh are they setting her up to be kind of like a, a female you know tom cruise character I but she wasn't insufferably uh you know uber annoying feminist. she wasn't yeah. trying to put him down like no. i kind of it, even though it was annoying at times that she wouldn't trust him but i liked her like very female moments like when they, when he was trying to get her to jump to the other platform and she kept like holding on to yeah, him yeah, like, yeah. like that, that was, was that believable was yeah. Yeah. and yep. cute yeah. and, it, and and by the time she actually did put her trust in him it really meant something and you're yep. like oh wow she fucking you're, 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 yeah. i think that's the, the the job they did really well with her because uh she's so self-reliant uh in in the, to start the film off with this is this is all her she gets a job she does it herself she's on her own so everything was a game absolutely everything was a game so even when he's saying hey i'm doing this she's just like i don't care you i need you to serve my uh you know desire whatever it be whether it's be to escape to get hold of this to get the key whatever it may be i just need to use you as a tool right. then the the incident happens in venice and then we have the talk in the safe house and it's then that she realizes that it, she's fucked and she's you know, like, it, I really do yeah. need men. Which well, is like yeah, I, yeah, I'm, what I'm just a simple for all woman. Women yeah. Have. Well, and, and they explain, they, ex they explain that I'm... she was an orphan, right? So she'd always have to you know, had to be self reliant. Yeah. So that's called yeah. characterization. I know we're not used to it. Yep. These are like basic elements yes. of filmmaking, <laughs> an, an right? Arc. Unless she's got and superpowers doing, and doing martial arts, which is not real. There's yeah, that's what I mean. Like, and, unless she's in, 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 in the real world. in the real world. That's what I mean. That's why, like, it's so hard I mean, to even, believe these movies. Even when they have superpowers in these films, these characters don't have any sort of uh, arc to have gained the powers. Like they've done a, a heaps of uh, films from Disney to um, Disney Marvel to action films that are just ladies kicking butt. And a lot of times they don't have any struggle of, of coming of age of how they actually gain their powers. Oh, yeah. It's just they got a bracelet and now they can kick ass. And yeah. it's like no one can really humanize or relate to that. So, you know, the, it's just the, the reality. For the, for the male counterparts, they're always struggling before they become who they are. Every you know? person struggles in order to get to a certain point. You don't just instantly be able to be like, no, you know, Tai Chi, unless it's the matrix and you've got <laughs> some chip in your head and, and they're programming it. And now you've downloaded some software. That's a different theory because it's sci-fi that works in sci-fi. But outside of that, it's just, you're trying to purport a reality that no one can relate to. And yeah. you can't force interest. You cannot force the consumer to watch something. So all these movies have been bombing over the last year. Hey guys, if you wanna watch more clips, click here. And if you wanna watch the full podcast, click right here.